Hello my loves, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. It is Tuesday, Tuesday evening. I'm currently doing Patreon sprints, but I just want to check in. God, my face is really red. I'm in the process of taking makeup off, but I thought I would check in and let you know that I started reading this beautiful thing. This is Ariadne by Jennifer Zane. This is an arc, but it does come out in April. In fact, it might be out by the time this video goes up. But this is a Greek myth retelling focusing on Ariadne from the Theseus and the Minotaur story. And I am already 100 pages in, absolutely loving it already. The writing in this is just so lovely to read. I can't quite explain why or pinpoint why, but it's just really lyrical, I would say, without it being overly flowery or anything. Like, there's just a good choice of words. <laughs> so I am really enjoying this. I am intrigued to see what actually happens because we have already got to the part of the story, <laughs> like the story that you would know from the original myth has already started. So I'm wondering how another 300 pages or so are going to be filled, but I'm very excited to find out. I'm loving seeing Ariadne's perspective as part of the story. I will say, if you're not a fan of kind of spontaneous romances. What's it called? Love it. No, what is the trope called? I can't remember what the trope is called. Insta love, there we go. If you're not a fan of insta love, maybe you wouldn't like this one. I mean, it's not too bad, but it's Greek myth, you know? They are the sort of stories in which somebody glances across at each other for the first time and that's it, they're meant to be married. So I would say if you don't enjoy that kind of thing, then maybe you wouldn't enjoy this, but it is really lovely to read. Like lovely is just the word that I'm using for this so far. And yeah, I'm very much looking forward to continuing on. So I am hoping to read maybe a hundred pages or so tonight, but we shall see. I have had a very stressful day. One of those days in which everything results in more emails. <laughs> I've had 43 emails today, just to my personal account, nothing to do with like my normal work or anything. Also just been like generally arranging things. I've been selling some stuff, so I've been needing to pack them and just, yeah, I am very much in need of a chilled evening. So I'm going to go and take my makeup off, get all cozy for the sprints and see how much I can read today. Hello, it is now Wednesday <laughs> and I am 210 pages into Ariadne. I read those yesterday. I read 100 pages during Patreon reading sprint yesterday and I am still really, really enjoying it. I have come across one thing which I'm a little bit mm, about because there's a reason I'm getting through this so quickly. It's not the writing style because the writing style is actually pretty descriptive. Every so often a character will come along and they will tell their story or a story from their past. And we have come across a point in which there is one character or even just a few of them who are telling many stories. And since I already know of these stories, I'm reading through them pretty quickly. And because there's so many of them, that means I'm reading the entire book pretty quickly. <laughs> now, I don't mind because I do enjoy the stories. I love Greek mythology, but I was thinking to myself, like, how is this book going to be this long? Because we kind of covered a lot of the Theseus and the Minotaur story within the first like hundred pages. So now I have my answer. <laughs> We're doing a kind of tour of all of the stories, but like I said, I'm not disliking it. I'm just kind of like, I wanted to see more of the one story that we were gonna follow, if that makes sense, which we are. I do find it interesting as well because we are also actually following Ariadne's sister now. Her story isn't one that I'm too well aware of and it is that kind of thing that I'm more intrigued by. So yes, I am hoping to read another 100 pages tonight because I seem to be on a roll with 100 pages a day at the minute, but I am currently going to go and do some exercise, then get in the bath, I'm freezing today, so I am so looking forward to just warming up through exercise and a bath. And then I'm going to get in bed and read. So a chilled evening planned. Also, I have incense lit and there's an absolutely huge bath fizzer thing. And the scent of them both combined is making me feel so relaxed that I'm just like... <laughs> so yes, I am in a pretty good mood, even though I look like absolute death, but time for a fairly chilled evening. <laughs> Hello, it is now Thursday. I did not check back in last night because I just had a bad brain evening and didn't do anything besides aimlessly watch things. Didn't read anything, literally nothing. That was just a massive flop. <laughs> but I am now currently in reading sprints, this time on Leanne's channel, and I am hoping to actually read something because I did want to finish this tomorrow, 
We'll see how that goes. I do have 100 and 180 pages left. I think it is definitely doable, especially depending how much I read for the rest of these sprints. I spent the first half of the sprints editing tomorrow's video because, again, bad brain day yesterday, so I just didn't do what I was meant to do yesterday. And I've had to do it all this evening, so not great for me, although I did finish doing work in terms of like creating videos before eight, so I'm very pleased with that because I didn't think I was going to, so yeah. But I did just want to give you a quick update and say I'm about to continue with this. So let's see how far we can get tonight. Very quick update to say that I now only have 99 pages left of this book. And me being me, I can't leave a book when I'm under 100 pages left. <laughs> so even though it's pretty late at night, I don't know what actual time it is, but even though it's very late at night and I'm about to go and do Zumba and then get in the shower, I am also then going to zoom that out because that was very close to my face. I'm then going to attempt to finish the book. I am actually flying through it and I think it's very doable without being like 3am in the morning by the time I'm finished. But that is why this is a quick update because I don't want to leave it too late. And like I said, I have some but to do, so. We'll see how it goes. I do think fatigue might actually win, but we shall see. <laughs> Hello my loves, we're in a very random corner but I've just been sorting out a whole bunch of stuff on the floor and decided to stay here. <laughs> so I wanted to check in, it's now Saturday, no it's not. It's now Friday evening and I did indeed finish reading Ariadne last night. I didn't check in because again my brain just did a bit of a bit of a nosedive in the night but I did end up curling up and finishing off the rest of this book and I rated it four stars. I really enjoyed it. Although I will say, considering I was already in like a mm, mood, this, <laughs> this definitely didn't help. It's definitely one that kind of pulls you down when you finish it, but like in a, in a good way, because I would say that all of the marketing for this book that compares it to Cersei is very, very accurate. This almost felt like a sister novel to Cersei because so much of it is reminiscent of it. It definitely has the same vibes in terms of the writing and how the stories are told, how they fit together. Even in terms of, you know, having a woman being abandoned on an island for whatever reason and seeing how they cope with that. And again, with the same sort of, it's not the same ending, but it's the same tone to the ending. It's a kind of, I'm not sure whether this is a happy or sad moment. It's just a strange moment that I'm gonna be like, oh, <laughs> about. But I would definitely say that if you are a fan of Cersei, read this book because so many things are reminiscent of it. And yeah, I just, I can't get over the parallels of it. Absolutely hit the nail on the head for me. The only reason I wouldn't rate this one quite as high as I did with Cersei, because Cersei is one of my all time favorite books, this one isn't, even though I loved it, I did notice more in this book how much of the dialogue between characters was basically just them recounting Greek mythology stories that I already knew. It's the reason why I read this one so quickly is because I already knew a large part of this book. I would say maybe 60-70% of this book was just a recounting of stories that I already knew. Now of course I knew that going into it because it's a Greek myth retelling, I'm going to know the stories. But I mean in a way where nothing more was added. It wasn't like a behind the scenes look at those stories, it wasn't... I don't know how to explain it. It basically was just dialogue of one character coming in and being like, here's a story from my past and it would be a story I already knew and then we'd just kind of move on or... I don't know, it was just a little bit like, okay, I've heard this story and as I said before, I was more interested in the additional backstory to that or I don't know how it could present another perspective maybe. So I do wish there was a little bit more of that, but that is honestly the only criticism I can find for this book. Really, really enjoyed it, highly recommend it. And I'm really glad to have read a Greek myth retelling because it's one of my favorite like subgenres. And I feel like I haven't read one for a while. So it definitely restored something in me. <laughs> So after that, I am actually going to start, I don't have the book with me, but I'm going to start reading Which is Steeped in Gold. The publisher sent me an arc a little while ago and I have been holding off until closer to publication date. And I think it's published on the 20th of April. So we're very quickly approaching that. And I have actually already read the first 50 pages, not recently. I started it a little while ago and then put it down so that I could read it closer to the time. So. I actually do remember the first 50 pages pretty well, so I probably am just going to carry on from there. For the rest of this evening, I am just going to chill out. I'm going to have what will hopefully be a long bath. I love the idea of long baths, but I often find myself quite impatient, just like 
sitting there. I can't sit still for very long, so I don't know. We'll see what kind of mood I'm in, but I am going to take my book into the bath with me, put a face mask on, probably use a bath bomb. I'm also going to light a candle because it's been a little while since I've done that. And <laughs> I'm also mad at myself because I have one of Becca's Grace and Honey candles. It's four from Blood and Ash and I was meant to light it when I was reading from Blood and Ash last week and I just completely forgot. So I missed the opportunity for peak atmosphere, but I'm gonna light that candle tonight instead and see how much of the book I can get through. I think I'm just going to leave my phone somewhere that I can't really see it, I guess. I actually haven't been using social media all too much recently besides maybe TikTok because when my brain isn't doing too well, TikTok just has lots of really stupid, funny videos that cheer me up. So I tend to spend a lot of time on there if I'm feeling bad, but yeah, I really want to do some reading this evening. So I shall be doing reading sprints, but one thing I did also want to show you is very, very exciting. I have this, this box, which has come all the way from America. And this was sent to me by Kelsey. So you guys will probably know her better as KJ Sutton. She's the author of the Fortuna Swan series and I already know what's in here. This has been a long awaited package and I'm very excited to finally see it because I have read all of the books that are out so far in that series on ebook, so Kelsey has sent me early copies via ebook, and that's how I've been reading the books. I've been intending to buy physical copies for ages, but then Kelsey said that she would actually send me them, and so that's what's in the box, but I believe there is also a few other goodies in there as well, and I'm very excited. <laughs> I can see an autumn theme! <laughs> we have autumnal goodness. We have this little tiny acorn, we have a pine cone and an autumn leaf, which I am definitely keeping these as Instagram props. Love stuff like this. We have a lip balm from Fiction Bath & Co. <gasps> Vanilla maple flavor. Oh my God. <gasps> that smells so good. Mm. Oh, I want to eat it. For context, <laughs> vanilla is my all time favorite scent, as basic as it is. But any kind of sweet thing, usually that can be associated with autumn. Yes. Anything that smells like an autumnal candle. Yes. <laughs> this. Yes. <laughs> this is what it looks like close up. And I cannot get over the scent of it. Oh my God. Okay. So we also have, oh, this is cute. We have a pin with some Fortuna and Colith fan art on it. We also have a candle. <laughs> with the cover art on the front. Ooh, that smells really fresh. I like that, love me a candle. I also have a letter which I am going to read off camera. <laughs> we have a Fortuna bookmark. Oh, she's so beautiful. And then we have the books themselves. I'm so excited to see these actually in person because I've just fawned over the covers for so long now. Oh my God. They're so beautiful! So of course we have Fortuna Swan, which is honestly just one of my favourite covers that's ever existed. I love the colour combination of this so much. We then also have the second book, Restless Slumber. And of course, the third and most recent book, Deadly Dreams. I'm so happy to finally have these. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kelsey, for sending these my way and with all the goodies as well and just... <laughs> this has made my week. Thank you so much. Very excited to display them on the fantasy romance shelf and of course I will leave a link to all of those books down in the description box if you guys want to check them out because they are my favourite fantasy romance series. I think I can officially say that. <laughs> One thing that I'm very excited about tomorrow is that I'm going to go to Waterstones I'm going to go to Waterstones. It's been so long since I've been to a bookstore and I just... Bookstores have reopened here again in England and it just so happens to line up with the reward part of my book buying ban negotiation thing, which I'll leave a link to the video announcing what that whole thing is about down below because it takes some explaining. But basically I have a TBR jar system which means that I can only buy books if I read a book specifically out of that jar. Not the books that I read as my standard TBR, it has to be out of that TBR jar. But it just so happens that in the course of April or in the past like three weeks or so, I have been reading so many of the books from the jar without even realizing it. 
And I noticed a few days ago because I knew that From Blood and Ash was in there. So I went to check what else was in there and I've read five tokens out of that jar. And I was just like, how did I never notice that? And it's lined up perfectly for when the bookstores have reopened. So I'm just like, I can go to Waterstones for the first time in months and months and months, have a good old browse and actually buy things. I'm so excited. <laughs> I do think I'm going to pre-order at least one, maybe two books. And I am quite literally just going to go to Waterstones and browse because there's one book that I have in mind that I want to buy, but otherwise I'm not entirely sure. So I will just have a good old look around while I'm in there. My plan is actually to head out really early because I had slash have still, I don't know if you would still say I have it or not, but at least a few years ago, I had very aggressive agoraphobia. <laughs> And let me tell you, being told that going outside is dangerous for a year does not help with that. So I am feeling a little bit anxious about going to the bookstore tomorrow and just going into town because people, COVID, everything. <laughs> but I know I can't just never go outside again. I know that it's going to be quite a while before I even get my first vaccine. So <laughs> I need to start going back out into society at some point. So my plan is actually to Head to the parcel post box first because I have a few Depop orders that I need to send and then I'm going to go to my favourite independent coffee shop because that has also reopened and I want to throw in all of the support I can and also just visit one of my favourite places I used to go to every single week and that's literally like a two minute walk away from the parcel place that I need to go to so I'll stop off there and get a morning coffee and then head over to Waterstones hopefully before it gets too busy because like I said I'm planning on getting up pretty early to go to these places. I don't actually know what time Waterstones opens. I don't know if they're doing like late openings to restrict the hours or if they're just open normal times. I've been trying to find out but nowhere seems to want to say so I'm kind of just hoping it opens at nine because that's how early I'm planning on getting there. <laughs> So I'm now back from the bookstore and I bought books, evidently. <laughs> so with the book buying ban, I can't remember if I said, but I have like five tokens to use. So I am going to pre-order a book, I think. I have two that I've ordered online because they weren't in the bookstore when I went to find it earlier and there weren't any other bookstores for me to look around. And then I have bought two. So there will be another show and tell of book mail tomorrow, but for now, the ones that I have are Malice by John Gwynn. This is one that I have been vaguely interested in for a while and I feel like more people are reading it recently, possibly because his new book is coming out. But I wanted to give it a go and it just sounds like pretty standard epic fantasy. So this one on the back says, The banished lands have a violent past where enemies of men and giants clashed in battle. An uneasy peace reigns, but now giants stir once more. The very stones weep blood and there are sightings of gigantic worms. Those who can still read the signs see a prophecy realised. Sorrow will darken the world as angels and demons make it their battlefield. Young Corbin watches enviously as boys become warriors and yearns to join them, determined that he will make his family proud. It is only when everything he knows is threatened that he discovers the true cost of becoming a man. As the kings look to their borders and priests beg answers from the gods, only a chosen few know the fate of the world will be decided between two champions, the Black Sun and the Bright Star, and with their coming will be a war to end all wars. 
very dramatic sounding. And then I did also pick up Empire of Sand by Tasha Suri. Now this one I actually picked up completely at random. And then when I got home, the book that I was going to pre-order was The Jasmine Throne. Now I can't quite place that pre-order yet, but I do plan to. I realized when I was looking at it that it's the same author. And I just completely did not put two and two together. So while I was walking around Waterstones, something drew my attention to this book. I read the back, I saw that S.A. Chakraborty had blurbed it, decided to buy it, and then I was like, I can't believe out of all the books that I happened to choose in Waterstones. It was an author's debut whose newest book I was about to pre-order. <laughs> like that just blew my mind. But this is at Tasha Suri's debut novel. It says that there is a girl caught between two cultures. Her father comes from the ruling classes of the empire, but her mother's people were outcasts and Rithi nomads who worship the spirits of the sands. She's brought to the attention of the emperor's most feared mystics, who try to force her into their service by way of an arranged marriage. If she fails to do their bidding, the gods themselves may awaken and seek vengeance. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely intrigued, so I'm even more excited about this now that I've discovered who the author actually was, so <laughs> those were my two choices from my bookstore trip. And it was actually a really lovely trip into town. I was only out for a couple of hours or so, but I went really early in the morning, made sure to get there just as the bookstore opened or like 10 minutes afterwards, I think it was I arrived because it's Saturday and it's sunny and I didn't want to like risk crowds or anything, especially since everything has literally just opened back up again and it's the first weekend afterwards. So I made sure to get there early and that was definitely a good plan because by the time I was done, I think I spent about an hour in the bookstore. And by the time I left, it did definitely start to get more busy in town. So that was when I was on my way back home again. And it's a really sunny day today. So my walk home was really quite chill, even though it is quite the hike, but I just enjoyed being outside in the sun. Had a fairly chill morning and then I have just been singing. Basically, <laughs> that's all I've done. I have like done basic chores while singing and stuff, but I don't really know what to do with myself now. I might actually just sit down and read. I'm feeling very like, hmm, today. And it's proven to be a kind of rest day that I would have needed amongst the chaos that life currently is. So I am tempted to take some photos for Instagram, but We'll see how much energy I can muster up throughout the day and just take it as it comes. <laughs> Hello my loves, it is now Sunday. I'm taking part in reading sprints. Well, productivity sprints, not reading sprints this time. Currently on Maddie's channel for Sunday, most of today. And I'm going to be using those productivity sprints to do lots of video shenanigans. I have just filmed my announcement for Do The Thingathon. <laughs> and then in the rest of the sprints, I'm planning to both edit that video and also start editing this vlog to hopefully just get all of the upcoming videos sorted, basically. <laughs> but I did just want to very quickly pop in and let you know that I am now 141 pages into Witches Steeped in Gold and I'm really enjoying it. So I think I said earlier in the vlog that I did read like 50 pages a while ago and then put it down. Now, the reason I did that is because the beginning of this did confuse me a bit with the actual like political systems and the different kinds of magic. And at the time that I initially picked it up, I just wasn't in the brain space to like try and make sense of things. I needed something that was much easier to read. So I put it down and I'm very glad I did because now that I've picked it up, I am much more invested. I'm so intrigued by how everything works and I'm just like, feeling the pull, you know? <laughs> so that was definitely an instance in which putting a book down was for the best. And now I'm back into it, very invested. I've just reached part two. So I think this is gonna be a turning point of sorts. And yeah, I love the personalities of both of the main characters in here. Iraya and Jasmine are just so, not necessarily likeable, but I've come to like them a lot just through reading about them. And we've only just met them really. So I'm intrigued to see how they progress, especially as they come together further in the book. So I'm definitely excited for that. And also just like wanting to know what's going on because there's clearly some bigger issue at play. And I just, I just I'm so intrigued. So glad that that is working out. And I'm hoping to get to at least page 200 today, but that will probably be this evening. I don't know how long these sprints are gonna go on for, but as I said, I'm going to be working on videos most of the day. So probably this evening, I will check in again and let you know how it's going. But I can definitely feel myself being pulled in and I'm very happy about that because I have been anticipating this book for a very long time. So yes, there is only a minute left of the sprint. So I'm going to pop off and jump back on there, but, I'm hoping for a productive day, so let's see how we go. Okay, I lied. <laughs> I lied. I was planning, wow, I'm shiny. I was planning to finish up the sprints and then like have my evening, eat food, finish up whatever I was doing, 
read and then come back to do an update but I am actually just going to wrap up the vlog here because during those sprints I filmed a video and then edited three videos <laughs> and now I'm exhausted, I'm hungry and I just want like a chill evening. So if I read before doing my final update I would end up working until like midnight, one o'clock again, which I've been trying really hard not to do. And since it's already like 7 p.m. I need to rein it in. So I'm just going to wrap up this vlog here before I've done any further reading. Don't know if I will do any reading this evening, but if I do, I will update you at the beginning of next week's vlog. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.